Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Usari Malayo and I'm a registered nurse living and practicing in Nigeria. On this channel, I film content related to nursing and healthcare and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about pain. If you're new here and you've not subscribed to the channel, click on the subscribe button to join your YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you get a notification whenever I drop another tutorial. With that being said, let's get into today's video. Now pain is a very subjective feeling so the definition of pain is a bit tricky because usually when you get to the hospital you hear that pain is whatever the person experiencing it says it is and it is existing whatever that person says it is so pain is personal it's something it could be physical it could be emotional it could be physiological you know depending so but um, a very um, concise definition that I'll be following for the purpose of this video was made by American Pace Society in 2008 and it describes pain as an unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. So there you have it as a very concise definition of pain. It could be sensory, it could be emotional, it could be because of a tissue damage, it may be because of a potential tissue damage and the person would usually describe this based on the extent of the damage. So if there's little damage the person would describe the pain as little and if there's a lot or extensive damage the patient is going to be screaming, shouting and comfortable while describing the pain. Pain is something you come across every day when you're practicing as a nurse. You can't escape it. So having a proper understanding of it and how to assess and how to assess it is very important for you as a nurse. So there are different categories of pain. You have acute pain, recent onset, probably for trauma, injury, an accident, fall, things like that and for short duration. You have chronic pain which is actually persistent and it could be from things like osteoarthritis or from you know chronic conditions like osteoarthritis then you also have what is called a nociceptive pain which is actually from a normal physiological process but the process actually produces pain a very very simple example of that is labor pain labor is a physiologic process is a physiological process rather but it is painful very very painful so that's a form of nociceptive pain then you also have neuropathic pain which occurs from abnormal processes in the body or a pathological condition are we together sure so just before i move on i'm going to leave the link to my website down in the description box below if you're interested student so you can take practice tests on different topics that you have been taught in school and as well as um, mock exams for your council exam so um you can take the test as many times as possible you can see the scores immediately you submit you get to see the correct answers the wrong answers and the explanations as to why those are either correct or wrong answers now let's move on to pain assessment before you can even manage pain you have to be able to assess pain but pain assessment is very tricky because pain is something that is personal you can't say that somebody is not feeling pain just because you don't see certain things you're expecting to see you can't just rule out pain. If a person says, if a patient rather says that they are feeling pain, you have to accept that that person is feeling pain and try to assess what that pain is about, what is causing it, where it's coming from, and probably possible ways to alleviate that pain. So when it comes to pain assessment, self-report is one of the most accurate ways to assess pain telling the patient to talk about the pain but because you are asking for self-report from somebody that may not even be a medical practitioner or a healthcare practitioner there has to be specific ways that you would ask questions regarding the pain to elicit the best or the most appropriate answers from your patient the things you want to ask are what location of the pain you ask about intensity of the pain um, you ask about quality of the pain onset and duration aggravating and relie relieving factors effect of the pain um on their function or quality of life and other information so when it comes to talking about intensity of pain you may have to grade the intensity of pain and a very common way you can grade the intensity of pain is using a numeric scale or using the faces um, pain scale but the numeric scale you have it graded from 0 to 10 you have 0 as you know little to no pain 
and um, no pain at all then you have uh, it's going to mild pain moderate pain then severe pain when it gets like 10 now you have faces the faces scale has about I think six different faces smiling to crying where each face represents a level of pain so you begin to ask the patient okay on a scale of 0 to 10 how would you grade your pain then you look at the face of the patient you judge by their facial expression and so many other ways but the common ways are numeric and face scale now talking about the quality of pain you want to ask if the pain is sharp shooting or burning is it um, is it aggravating and relaxing like is it that it gets intensified then it comes down with a beat going up and down you want to ask about that then you also want to ask about the onset and duration is it that the pain starts in the morning and once they start doing their normal daily activities the pain subsides or is it that the pain starts at night or in the middle of the night or in the afternoon you want to know the onset and duration of the pain you also want to talk about the aggravating and relieving factors what are the things that tend to aggravate that pain and what are the things that they do that tends to relieve the pain probably when they stand up the pain becomes intense and when they sit down the pain relieves them or it alleviates the pain so you want to check for aggravating and relieving factors you also want to ask about the effect of the pain on their quality of life Probably you want to know if the pain doesn't let them walk around, if the pain doesn't let them sit, if the pain doesn't let them sleep, if the pain doesn't let them eat, how that pain is affecting their life. You want to assess those ones. Then you also talk about their medical history, things that could actually be pointers to the cause or origin of the pain. These are like other information, probably genetics, um, age, gender. Um, ex, um, presence of some comorbidities and things like that could serve as pointers as to the cause and possible solutions to the pain the patient is experiencing. And when you want to assess pain for children, you are going to have to go through um, a different route because most of the time, neonates, um, children may not be able to communicate their pain. So there's something called a FLACC scale. F for facial expression, L for leg movements, A for activity, C for crying, and the last C for consolability. So you judge by these things to check if the pain is mild, moderate, or severe. So for the FLACC scale, each um, sector or each segment is graded from 0 to 2. So if it's like you have five elements in the scale and each, um, each can be graded up to 2. So you can only have a total of 10 in when you're using the FLACC scale. So for a score of zero, 1 to 3, the pain is mild. For 4 to 6, it is moderate. And for 7 to 10, the pain is graded as severe. So that's for children. So when it comes to pain management, you could have pharmacological management of pain as well as non-pharmacological management of pain. And as a nurse, you are going to be involved in both of these. For the pharmacological management, you are going to have to administer the pain medications, which are basically analgesic, although there are different classes of analgesics. And what will be prescribed for the patient would be based on age, uh, based on possibly presence of any medical condition, the cause of the pain, the type of the pain, the intensity of the pain will determine and how long the person is going to be on pain medications for will determine the type of pain that will be prescribed for the patient and some other characteristics that will be put into consideration. So as the nurse you are going to having to, you are going to have to educate your patients on their medications. Sometimes you may have to administer their medications or teach them how to self administer these medications. Now coming to non pharmacological um, uh, measures of managing pain you have things like proper body in alignment like positioning your patient well hot and cold compresses transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation elastiction breathing exercise you can use diversion therapies like singing meditation um, you can also use acupuncture which is actually very common in Asia so if you watch the video to this moment and you're yet to subscribe to my channel please subscribe right now so you don't miss out and I'll see you in my next video bye